everyone, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'm here to answer a bunch of meat stock questions for you. I get asked lots of questions about meat stock and it is one of the things that can be kind of confusing when you're first starting the GAPS diet. And there are just lots of things to know because it is one of the essential foods on the GAPS diet for sealing leaky gut and which really lays the foundation for overcoming so many other health challenges. So I wanted to do a video where I just go over some meat stock FAQs and talk about just the basics of what you need to know to make sure that you're making it correctly and all that good stuff. So I have a couple videos up on my channel already where I show how to make GAPS intro meat stock. I will link those down below so that you can find them easily in the description box. But the basic formula for making a good GAPS diet meat stock is that you need meaty bones, raw meaty bones. You need meaty bones that are going to have a joint and or connective tissue and water. That's your basic two ingredients. And then of course, it's very nice and helpful to add other ingredients to really give that meat stock a really nice flavor. So high quality mineral salt, like Celtic sea salt or Baja gold, some pepper, either ground pepper for those later gap stages or full gaps or peppercorns and strain them out if you're on earlier gaps intro. Also different vegetables add a really nice flavor. I find that adding at least two onions makes for the most delicious meat stock. I always like to add celery because it adds a nice flavor. I like to add garlic at the end, fresh pressed garlic into the finished pot of meat stock once I've turned the heat off. Carrots add a really nice flavor. There are of course other vegetables that you can add. You can add herbs, fresh or dried herbs. Either leave them in or strain them out depending on where you are on GAPS intro. One of the most important things for getting in the right amount of meat stock is to make sure that it's delicious, of course. Let's also talk really quickly about the difference between meat stock and bone broth. So this kind of dovetails into what I was talking about when you're choosing what kind of bones to make meat stock. You want meaty bones, so bones with meat on them, raw, and connective tissue. So meat stock is cooked for a short amount of time. For poultry, it's one and a half to three hours. For everything else, like bison, beef, game, lamb, pork, it's four to six hours. Fish is one hour to an hour and a half. Bone broth, on the other hand, is cooked using bony bones. These can be bones that were taken from another meal, so they don't have to be raw. They don't really have meat on them, and it's cooked for a long time. So why meat stock on the GAPS diet? So meat stock is, when it's made properly, is low in histamines. It also doesn't have the glutamic acid that bone broth does. Glutamic acid can be very irritating for people who still have a leaky gut and it can really aggravate symptoms. So that's why we do not use bone broth on GAPS intro. We can add bone broth much later. Once we're on to full GAPS and have been there for a while, the symptoms are resolved, then we can add that if we want to. It's not a GAPS essential. Meat stock is a GAPS essential and that's what we use in the beginning. So those are the two main differences between meat stock and bone broth is the type of bones that you're using and the cook time. Bone broth is cooked for a very long time. Meat stock is cooked for a very short time. You use raw, meaty bones for meat stock. You use bony bones for bone broth. Bone broth is also high in histamines, which for somebody who has a leaky gut, that can cause problems. So it's another reason why we don't use it on GAPS intro and not until that leaky gut is sealed. Another really important part of making meat stock is using the correct amount of water. A really good rule of thumb is to use one quart of filtered water for every pound of meaty bones. You can use less water than this too, and that's great too. It'll just be a lot more concentrated. All those nutrients will just be in a more concentrated form. It'll probably be a lot thicker consistency when it's chilled, and that's all fine. If you use more water than that, then it's gonna be a thinner consistency and you'll just have to drink more of it to get those great benefits, but there still will be the benefits there. So one quart of filtered water for one pound of meaty bones is a really great ratio. I have seen some people do one cup of water for every pound and that, like I said, will just be a more concentrated meat stock. Either one or anything in between is fine. You just generally wanna avoid 
having it be too diluted by using more water than that. If you're looking for a really complete, comprehensive guide to meat stock, I highly recommend this book, The Complete Cooking Techniques for the Gaps Diet by Monica Corrado. Dr. Natasha calls her the Gaps Chef and she's a wealth of information when it comes to cooking for the GAPS diet and properly preparing those foods so that you can get the benefits that you're looking for. This book is amazing for lots of the cooking techniques and it has a really important meat stock section and she talks about what bones to use, the different cook times, just you know everything that you need to know just in a really complete easy to understand way. So highly recommend this book. I'll have a link in the description box where you can grab a copy for yourself. Let's talk a little bit more about which types of bones to use for meat stock. So like I said, raw meaty bones, bones with meat on them, and then you want that joint or connective tissue. So the reason for that is you want a nice collagen rich meat stock because those are the nutrients that your body uses to seal that leaky gut. So there are lots of cuts that do have a joint in them. You can have a leg of certain types of animals, chicken wings, chicken drumsticks, chicken thighs, chicken quarters. Those are all going to have a lot of that connective material from those joints in there, connective tissue. Joints from other animals. For beef, I usually tend to go towards things like shanks or ribs. Now those don't have the exact joint in them, but they do have a lot of connective tissue. Another really great one for beef is ox tail because the tail is of course lots of joints and that has such rich collagen in it. It makes amazing meat stock. Now let's talk about choosing different cuts based on how much meat that you want to end up with. A lot of times it's nice to make meat stock as a meal so you have your pot on the stove or your Dutch oven in the oven or even like a casserole dish or something like that where you have your joint or your connective tissue, meat, bone cut in there. And then you have your water, your salt, your pepper pe or peppercorns, herbs, vegetables. And so that cooks everything all together. You get your meat, your vegetables, and your meat stock all at once. Sometimes though, you need more meat stock than that. And I'm gonna talk in a second about recommended amounts of meat stock, depending on where you're at on the GAPS diet. And if you're in a stage where you're drinking a lot of meat stock every day, Day, then if you make a meal like that just because you need meat stock you're gonna end up with way more meat than you're gonna be able to easily eat before it goes bad so another thing that you can do is make something called low meat meat stock and that just means that you choose those types of meaty bones that have less meat on them they still have the joint and the connective tissue and everything but you're not gonna end up with so much meat so for chicken some really good ones that you can choose are heads feet, backs, and chicken wings. So you can cook all that together, you'll get nice gelatin rich broth, and then you won't have a bunch of meat from it. For beef, you can also do knuckle bones. If you have marrow bones with some meat on there, those can be good to add to. I wouldn't do marrow bones just on their own because you're probably not gonna have enough connective tissue, but if you do those like with some knuckle bones, then you're gonna get a low meat beef meat stock. For fish, if you have um, just some heads and skeleton type of a cut, so raw, of course, you can cook that and then you're not ending up with a bunch of meat from that as well. And same goes for any of those other animals, anytime that you can find the knuckles or things like that that don't have much meat on them but still fit that criteria of meaty bones that are raw with connective tissue, then you can cook those and make meat stock and then you won't have so much meat left over. So that can be really handy. Now let's talk about recommended amounts for meat stock because a lot of people wanna know how much you're drinking. So on purpose, Dr. Natasha is always very intentional about everything that she includes in her books. She doesn't have a recommended amount and that is because GAPS is so bio-individual and it really depends on where you're at, you know, how old the person is, what symptoms they're dealing with, and all that good stuff. So that being said, there are certain times when there are good target amounts to have to work towards and to drink for a certain amount of time when it comes to meat stock. So practitioners have found that there's a certain amount for adults, children, and babies where when a person is having this amount of meat stock every day for a concentrated amount of time, then that's when you see results. So you don't have to continue this amount for the entire time that you're on GAPS diet, two years, whatever it happens to be. But when you're in intro, you want to have this be your goal amount and take this much while you're on intro. 
And then if you're starting with full gaps and you're trying to overcome some health challenges, you'll wanna make sure that you do this for a while too. So it could be a few months, six months. For some people, it could be a year, something like that. So what are those amounts? So for adults, it's four to six cups of meat stock every day. And then for children, two to three cups. And then for babies, so like an age when they have just started solids, your goal amount is one cup. And so like I said, after you have gotten to that target amount and done that for a certain amount of time and seen symptoms really resolve, then you don't have to keep up that amount long term as you're on gaps. Another really important thing to know about meat stock is when you're first starting out with it, if you haven't been drinking it before, and also this can just happen even if you had been drinking it, just in combination with also eliminating other non-gaps foods and just making the transition onto gaps from however you were eating before, meat stock does cause die off. And some people are surprised to find this out and they're surprised at how little they can only tolerate when they're first starting and that's okay. It's good that you're starting. Don't feel bad or down about it. Just realize how good it is that you're starting where you need to start. So for some people, they have to start with like a few sips. Some people have to start with half a cup. Some people have to start with a cup. Some people have to start with one spoonful. Wherever you need to start, that's good. You start there and then gradually work up. And then as far as making sure that you're avoiding different kinds of reactions when you're starting out with meat stock and learning how to make it and everything, it's nice to have a variety. You don't have to stress about variety if you don't have full, complete animal kingdom available to you in meaty bones. That's okay. Just do the best that you can with what you have. You wanna look for healthy bones from healthy grass-fed organic animals as much as possible. But even if that is not available to you, Dr. Natasha says people can still heal and see good results using conventional bones as well. She says prioritize organic produce if you have to, but make sure that you're doing organic produce because plants don't have a detox system, whereas animals do. So she says conventional bones and meat can be fine if that's all that you can get or all that you can afford. But ideally, we wanna look for organic, 100% grass-fed, grass-finished, or pasture-raised meaty bones, and then for seafood, sustainable, wild-caught. And then back to what I was saying about making sure that you're not having reactions. Don't overthink this too much. Just start with where you are at. Work in variety as you're able and just relax. Try not to worry about anything and just kind of start and see where you're at. Sometimes people with severe histamine reactions will not be able to tolerate a certain variety of meaty bones or meat stock. For example, beef can sometimes be a problem for these people, but not always. So if you have a type like that where you're not tolerating it well, that's okay. You can avoid it and do something else for a while and then introduce it later once some more healing has happened. But don't go into it worrying about what am I gonna react to? Oh, I don't think I tolerate this kind of meat. Just relax, take a deep breath, go into it, Start making your good food. Think about it positively and don't like look for problems, if that makes sense. When you're making meat stock correctly, with that short cook time, then it's gonna be low in histamines anyway, and it's just gonna do your body a lot of good. Okay, I hope that that was really helpful. I hope that you enjoyed that and found some answers to questions and just found it helpful. Be sure and check out that description box for links to free eBooks and other goodies that I have. I also have a free class on how to start the GAPS diet with less confusion and more confidence. I'll have a link to that down below. I also have a free GAPS diet getting started guide eBook. I also have a meal plan, a 30 day meal plan for the GAPS diet. There's links to all that down below as well as information for my program where I guide clients through the GAPS diet. If you did like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with anybody else who you think would find it helpful. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two new videos every week on nourishing recipes and natural living. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time, bye.